not this one. Oh, no. Oh, it's, it's, it's yeah, it kind of has a, a life of its own. It's... You know, you don't want just a flat apricot. There's a color. I've seen it. Uh, more of a full-bodied bouquet. What? 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 <laughs> it's, it, it's those barns we saw camping out in Montana. They were brown. Sure, they're brown because it's the sky behind the barns. Those apricot dawns. Apricot dawns behind the barns of Montana. I sing the melody, you sing the melody. No, Wendy, I know. It's like the flush on a virgin's cheek. Yeah, this is what not the going? color of your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't listen to this. No, no more, please. Martin I can't. Cares. Please, no. <laughs> room. Our baby's gonna sleep in this room. All right, if we ever finish it. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. You know, kind of wait and see what its personality is. One baby. Coming up. <laughs> A waiting personality. Uh Boy or girl? That's my little secret. <laughs> that <laughs> looks like a puppet. <laughs> puppet, huh? <laughs> Personality is just luck. Discipline is what counts. You? Get it cracking right out of the box. Okay, come on, let's see it. Practice. You're gonna be much. <laughs> There's a school, you know, that says that this is the time that they pick things up. Why do you think we're listening to Mozart? <laughs> How do we do this? I don't know. Lunch a couple times. <laughs> things got out of hand. <laughs> Furniture is ordered, my job's taken care of. The Moz classes start Friday. Oh, God. I always thought natural childbirth meant you didn't have to wear makeup. I'm not having any unskilled labor in there with me, buddy. I'll be there with my little whistle and my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. We're getting a Christmas baby. You look so beautiful. Six months pregnant, and I look beautiful. I look like a whale. <laughs> My beautiful whale. <sighs> well, that sigh was a ten. I'm going to lose a major account if I don't come up with something by tomorrow morning. Who's? Sendrex Corporation. We ran out of duck on a flight to Houston last week. Their senior vice president didn't get any. He says he's never going to fly our airline again. You made that up. Uh, no. I don't think so. Powerless in the grip of circumstances. Yes, but I take it as a personal challenge. No, hang on. Maternity leave is in seven weeks. Ah. Are you doing that on purpose? No. <laughs> Your heart is a brick. Uh-huh. What is it? I don't know. It's stopping, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what was all that about? Premature contractions. You think? There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> He's a kicker.
Wendy? Leo? Honey, you in there? <laughs> Call Dr. Kennedy. This is Dr. Piyashi in the emergency. We have a lady and she's had a sudden third trimester bleed. Dr. Kennedy's patient? Yes. Get her up to labor and delivery. It moved. I felt it move. Baby's chugging along. What's happened? Is it painful here? To the touch? Tender. Crampy? A little. Feel like contractions? It did, I now? think. Now? Now? No. Just a sudden gush of bleeding and the pains went away? And the bleeding stopped? Mm-hmm. We've got a category that we call a third trimester bleeding. You're just going into it. You're six months along. There are causes for this that don't necessarily mean there's going to be big trouble. If the bleeding stops, baby's fine, mama's fine, pregnancy continues. And that's what we're hoping. But you may be trying to have an abruption. An abruption? When the placenta separates from the uterus prematurely. Now we're going to observe you here in the labor and delivery area tonight until we're sure what's going on, until you've stabilized. Either you'll get better and quit bleeding, or we'll have to deliver you. What are the odds? I just can't give you any odds at this time. Let's hold on to good thoughts. Now, I'm right here on the floor if you want me. You two have something private going on? Well, you know, fathers and daughters. A girl. No doubts. No doubts. An apricot room. A pink baby. Eh. I feel I already know her. I do know her. Neil? Honey, nothing is going to happen to this no. baby. <sighs> Doctors always give you the worst case. Look, it's a built-in mechanism. They can't help it. I'll take a leave from my job. It's two months early, but we have those CDs. We'll be all right. Of course we will. I'll call my mother. Oh. She'll come down. She'll help around the house. I'll stay in bed. I won't do anything I'm not supposed to do. Honey, come on. I won't read any upsetting come romantic on. novels. I'll eat yogurt. Please give us one month. One more month. They make it sometimes if they get to seven months. Seven months? What are you talking about? We're going to go the whole way with this now. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to wear that new maternity dress you bought. All the more reason. <laughs> <laughs> Do not open until Christmas. <laughs> Notify County, we need a transport team standing by. What's going on? She's filling with blood. She can go into shock. We're going to section. Well, I want to be there. I don't think that's why. Well, I want to be with you. Like, she's going well, to be under anesthetic. It's going to be a difficult scene. Why can't I just... I'll tell you exactly what's happened as soon as I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, everybody, let's go as fast as we can. How are we doing? Scared. We're going to relax you a little. Now, Wendy, what I'd like you to do is start counting down from 10, please. No. Yes, please. 10, 9, 8. That's good. 7. I think she's out. Okay, let's go. Dr. 
Longmire. Dr. Longmire to surgery. We have a little girl. Neil, I'm sorry. Trouble? She was born with Apgar's Corp, too, which is dreadful. She has no suck, no swallow, no gag, no reflexes, no muscle tone, no movement. Her heart beats ragged. Birth weight's 560 grams. Grams? One pound, four ounces. One pound, four ounces. What can you do? The immediate job is to protect the brain and nervous system. Try to fight infection. We've sent her to county. They have facilities, can do things there. We can't possibly. They'll evaluate her. She will probably not live very long. We should be grateful for catastrophes that didn't occur. Wendy's in no danger. She can have another child. She's going to be well. Miss? Mr. Scott? Hello, I'm Jean Gelson. I'm with Social Services. Let me help you with this. How's your wife? She's, uh, pretty beaten up. I understand. I know how you must feel coming to see a baby who's so sick. It has to be very upsetting. These children are so special. When I heard you were here, I was up on the fourth floor playing with a little girl who's about four years old. She came through this very unit four years ago. She was just here having her tonsils out, and she was getting ready to go home today. 
She gave me the biggest hug. You get that sort of thing? This is a remarkable place. Some wonderful things happen here. Your baby could not be at a better equipped hospital. Would you excuse us, please? Thanks. Here she is. It's very difficult when you first see a preemie. Especially when you have this Gerber thing in your mind and you come in here and see all these French fry warmer arrangements and all those wires and tubes. What's happening to her? Okay. She's under the blue lights because of a high bilirubin level in her blood cells and jaundice. She's getting fed a mixture of antibiotics directly through the umbilical opening to get a jump on infection if it develops. Oh, God. Why? Mr. Scott, I'm not going to lie to you. She's on the edge. She has highline membrane disease, respiratory distress syndrome. Lungs won't inflate on their own. She's too young. The only standard treatment is the use of the respirator, which has mixed success. But if that little lady gives us half a chance... Well, a one-pound, four-ounce baby? We've saved them smaller than that somewhere on these walls. But my wife's obstetrician... I was told... He had... He said she has almost no chance. If that's what he said, if you're quoting him accurately, I'd have to say that man is living in the wrong century. He could very well respond to a month of making rounds in this unit. The man does not know what can be done. I'm not going to tell you this isn't intense. We can't tell much till the first 12 hours are up. And if they get over that, they've got three, four days. Most of our babies who make it, make it in the first 48 hours. Once you get 48, 72 hours, and you don't have an impending lethality, you've got a real hot chance of making it. We're talking 90% plus, okay? How can I help? I've got to get information. There's going to be decisions. Mrs. Gelson is very good at pinpointing problems that mean a lot to you and your wife when she's well enough to visit or your family. We don't work in a vacuum. Coffee with her, use her offices anytime. That's what we're all about here. Sign, please. Both places. Uh, what am I signing? Assignment of insurance to hospital with agreement to pay anything not covered and consent to standard medical procedures. Uh, standard procedures, meaning? Which may include, but are not limited, to laboratory, x-ray, medical and surgical treatment under general and special instructions of infant's physician or surgeon. Let me just read this. <clears throat> It's not a very good picture. It's wonderful. I think she's wonderful. I called your mother. <sighs> Honey, <laughs> you're in a state of grace now. I can take care of that kind of thing. What'd she say? They're praying. Got a namer. All right. Katie? My grandmother's name? Sure. Katie Michelle, you like it? Katie Michelle. <laughs> mm. What'd she sound like? I didn't hear. I'll do anything. I'll be a perfect person. I'll be a perfect parent. Please give me the chance. You have to put those around the back. Why the hell did you call me? At 3 o'clock in the morning? Damn right, 3 o'clock in the morning. You know I've been down here. I know you would. I called Wendy's mother. Well, what did she say? She wants to know what we did wrong. Oh, noble thinking, that really helps. You had a premature child, that happens. Yeah. How's Wendy? They give you this photograph. It's a Polaroid, but it, it's blurred. You can't see the wires and tubes. They have the baby patched into this kind of central mechanical mother. All 
pumps and compressors. You don't see any of that. I gotta get that damn fan fixed. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyway, you have this photograph and it's fuzzy because this guy has been taking pictures for years, decides that it's nicer for the mother if he just jiggles his hand a little bit when it hits the shutter. So the idea she gets is that her baby's got fingernails and hair and this little pink face crying out for her milk. How are you going to deal with that one? I'm not dealing with anything much right now. Well, you got the best. I hear what they can pull off now, in these well, That's places. another thing. I met her doctor, and we don't connect. He makes you feel like you're non-existent. Right. But he seems to think she's got a pretty good chance. Oh, hell yes. Listen, Dave. For the next couple of days... You get out of here, you go home, and you get some sleep. Neil, I'm here. You know that. Yeah. Go on. Thanks. It's gonna turn out. We got guys of the moon. Neil Scott. I'm Dr. Nelman. What's happened? Come on over here. Thanks for coming in. in the What's happened? Um, your baby almost went into failure during the night. Why? Well, even with a respirator supplying a high percentage of oxygen, she can barely breathe. We had to boost the breathing rate because her blood gases were low. But the pressure from the respirator Collapsed the lung. Oh, my God. We had to suction off the air that got between the chest and the lung in order to allow the lung to reinflate. You're going to see a new tube in her chest. I, I, I didn't want you to walk in there and not understand. Well, can't you take her off the respirator? Uh, no. Her lungs are too immature. She couldn't possibly survive without it. Wait a minute. I, I, if you take my baby off the respirator, she can die. But if you leave her on, it can kill her. Well, sometimes it's a means of keeping an infant alive. But the procedure is a real assault on the baby's system. I mean, I, I have to tell you, there's a good chance it's going to happen again. We were... We were given every indication that... if we get past the first 48 hours... Then... In, 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 in two years, in working in neonatal intensive care, I don't remember ever seeing a baby with, with lung support. I'm, I'm surprised that wasn't conveyed to you. My wife. You, you have a desperately sick baby, Mr. Scott. Come on, sugar, just another half cc. I don't know if we're going to get this. The needle's larger than her vein. Let's finish this later. Does baby girl Scott have a name yet? Katie Michelle. I'll go have a name tag made.
blind? I'm sorry. Could have killed somebody. I said I wasn't paying attention. I'm well, sorry. if you can't pay attention, get away from the wheel. My mind was... You know, this is just what we need. Another stupid drive. Get out and say that. Come on, you want to have it on the it right here? Come on, come on, get out of here. What's the matter with you? Come on back here, damn it. <laughs> you want to take David and Robin's flowers? Uh, they're too far gone. Yeah. Why can't we just go? No, no, we have to wait for someone to take you. My milk. Hi. Here we go. Okay? Yeah. Okay, when you get there, just give it to one of the nurses. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. All right. Got to get a license to drive one of these things. <laughs> Got to join the staff. <laughs> I think I already have. <laughs> Okay. Jenny? Yeah. Thanks. It's gonna be fine, Mrs. Scott. <laughs> Goodbye, Jenny. Good luck, Mr. Scott. People just don't know what to say yet. They don't know what to send. I don't care. Let's go. Honey, this isn't going to be what you think it is. I just want to see her. Come on, let's go. Mrs. Gelson, in ICU. Mrs. Gelson, in ICU. Mr. Scott. Mrs. Scott? Oh. Hello, I'm Jean. Jean Gelson. How do you do? Excuse me, I just need to put on a gown, too. Did you just come over from the hospital? Yes. Well, I think that's wonderful. You know, interaction between parent and child is something we just can't provide. <laughs> to be able to interact with her and be a family member. Can I see her? Sure. Right this way. Kathy. Kathy, I'd like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Scott. Yes, we already met. Oh, good morning. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Come to see our little fighter? Oh, yeah. These nurses, all the personnel at this hospital are terrific. Oh, uh, I brought this. It's, uh, well, you know what it's, it's... Oh. We'll take very good care of it. We encourage our mothers to bring in their milk. It supports the bonding process. Where is she? She's right down here. Here's a little fellow. Weighed two and a half pounds when he was born. Not much more than yours. He goes home next week. I want to see mine. It's important that you realize the physiological effect that you have on your newborn. Not less than often thought of. Most people, you know, they tend to think of a baby as not really being functional until it reaches term. Okay. And that's Can we just do this later? I, I just want to see my baby. You must understand, Mrs. Scott. One's first view of their baby. Please. Oh, my 
I'm sorry we're late. Dr. Radburn, I think you've met. Hey, yes, yeah, Mr. Scott, good to see you again. Yes, and this is Mrs. Scott. Mrs. Scott. And Dr. Nelman. Hi, this is my Hello. wife, Wendy. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Scott. Let's be comfortable. Please be seated. How are you feeling? <laughs> Rough morning? Well, let me tell you something, Mother. A uh, premature baby is the hardest thing to love instantaneously. And every mother has the fear of being judged, condemned, which is totally misplaced though understandable. Okay? I understand you have some questions. I'm not ungrateful, and I'm not trying to put problems in your way. We don't stand on ceremony here. I'm afraid for our baby. I'm afraid for us. I, I just want to know what's happening. I, all I'm getting is contradictions. Your baby is critically ill. I've never said anything else. She's way below birth weight and still at high oxygen setting. But you've said it with an inference that you were hopeful. We're always hopeful. Well, that's not what I get from Dr. Nelman. What's he alluding to? The pneumothorax. Oh, that was a misreading. What, you mean he's wrong? She doesn't have the worst lungs he's seen here in the last two years? What is it you're asking? I just want the truth. I, I want to know what her chances are. Is there going to be more damage? I know she's on 100% oxygen. I read what, what that can do to lungs like hers. Where did you get that figure? It can almost destroy her. It did almost destroy her. She's got blood gases of 7.2. Below that, life is impossible. Who's giving him those figures? It's on her chart. Uh, and I did some research on my own. We'll call you if there's something to worry about. Something we think you should know. Please. I just want to know what's going on with our baby. Is she beyond all this stuff and we're not being told? What is your profession, Mr. Scott? Doctor we talk I wouldn't to attempt you to gives tell you anything about your story. business. I'll... I wouldn't be qualified. Well, you're not telling us anything about anything. Why? Are you trying to prolong life just to prove that you can do it? Neil. You're way off base. But, what kind of life is she going to have anyway? Neil. Look, he hasn't given us one straight answer. You certainly ask them enough questions. Look, if we could just relax a little. Don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like you talk to them. Who? The doctors. Nothing but questions and criticism. You think that's what I was doing? Why did you ask him if it was going to be damaged? That's a terrible thing. It was thing. a mistake. I never should have. Why not? It's what you wanted to I know. wanted the truth. Someone had to say something. He did. He told you. What? You heard him. Look, I know what Dr. Kennedy said. He denied it. I know what Dr. Nelman said. He won't admit it. You sounded like you were blaming him. What more was he I'm supposed to... not blaming to? anyone. This wasn't anyone's fault. I know that. You don't believe that. You Look, say I'm, it, but you I'm don't I'm not believe. even talking about blame. Blame? I don't want to hear this. All I meant is, what the hell are we in for? I know what you meant. You're afraid she won't be perfect. Oh, come on, I'm not afraid of any such thing. That there'll be something wrong, that she won't go to Harvard, to be homecoming queen. Oh, come on, lay off. If it's not a perfect baby, you don't want it. Okay, you're right, I am afraid. There, you see? I'm afraid that I'll start to love her and then she'll be gone. Don't then. Wendy. Wendy. Oh. Don't hate me, please. 
hate you. I'm sorry. How could I hate you? Why me? Why our baby? You should be sitting here with her inside me. She's our child. We're her parents. She doesn't feel like my child. I've never even held her. Come here. I'm so scared, Neil. I ran from her. I ran from my own baby. We're both scared. But we haven't done anything wrong. There's no judgment. There's no blame. Whatever happens. be a good idea for you to come down right now well for one thing there's not much you can do I, maybe in a couple of months when she's home from that no i don't think our moving when i was three months along had anything to do with it i mean it does i don't believe this i'm 32 years old and my mother is still trying to tell me how to run my life look i've got to go there's somebody here for me yeah yes i do too yes tell him i do too okay bye you okay? My mother. What does that mean? <laughs> I was her only baby. She always wanted to have another. No. <laughs> oh, no, I don't mean that. That's not fair. Does it matter? Yeah, everything seems to at the moment. I can't explain it. I went after Neil last night. Welcome to marriage. Well, we don't do that to each other. Oh, everybody else does. I spent my entire pregnancy thinking of a thousand and one horrible things that could happen. We all do. Come but when on. it did, I couldn't believe it. I can't believe it. <sighs> Am I being punished for something? Should Neil and I have stopped making love? Am I too high strung? <laughs> I didn't even think David and I should travel when I was pregnant. Everybody's got those thoughts. <laughs> Whoops. Hey. God bless you. <laughs> I think you're going to be a great mother. Your baby is going to be fine. How do you know? With an apricot nursery. The nursery does it. Oh, come on. Who could pass up a start like that? <laughs> oh, oh. Listen, come over tonight, okay? You haven't even been out of the house since the baby was born. No party, no big deal. Just stop over. Wear your jogging clothes, you know? We'll send out for some ribs. Maybe I'll call Terry. Terry? Yeah, she's had this huge fight with her new boyfriend. She didn't tell you? Yeah, it'd be great. Good. Okay, so I'll pick you up right here at 1045. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. See you later. She's going to see her baby, huh? Kidding. Oh, it's it's the questions. I just don't feel like talking. Honey, it's David and Robin and Terry, your best friend Terry. Who the hell do you think is going to ask questions? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Okay, everybody. 
dig in. It's no good tomorrow. Ooh. Take out, huh? Ooh, how does she do it? Well, you get to the frozen food section before it closes. <laughs> Drinks anybody? Neil? Fine. Whitney? I'll have some juice later. You need to get her off this hard stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sweet. You okay? Did you bump your head? Did you bump your head? Let me see. Let me see. Rub it. Isn't it great with kids? All you have to do is kiss it to make it well. I think I'll get that juice. Sorry. I didn't even hear it. I'm sorry about you and Hal. No. Oh. <laughs> Why do I always go for guys like that? <laughs> well, at least I'm through with them. You got the next one picked out. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I'm sure there'll be a next one. I mean, why lie to myself? <laughs> and why lie to you? I don't think I ever have. I didn't even hear it. It's not what I'm talking about. We both know it. I didn't know what to say. That's why I never called or came down to the hospital. I'm just so ashamed. It's OK. No, it's not. It must have been a terrible hurt, and I just... What do you say? Congratulations, or do you say I'm, I'm sorry, or send flowers? I... Wendy, what are you hoping for? I had a baby. I know. She's a person. She's just a little person. I want to hold her. I want to nurse her. I sit there in the hospital waiting for life to happen. What do you mean, what am I hoping? You did good, kid. Well, we got through it. I'll say we did. Finish painting the nursery. Yeah, we never got around to that. Do you like that color? It's my sweater. I left it there. Tell Robin just to hold on to it, or I'll pick it up later. Hello? Yeah? Okay, thanks. Wendy. They've been trying to get hold of us. They want us down there right away. There's a CAT scan of a baby's normal brain. Well, these are the ventricles, little spaces in the brain where we mix spinal fluid. This is your baby. What happened? The capillaries, which carry the blood, are very tiny in a baby this small. Now, sometimes, especially when there's a sudden change in blood pressure, they can burst. Blood seeps into the ventricles, causing what we call an IVH, interventricular hemorrhage. Now, we categorize these bleeds by grade, one through four, one being the least severe. So what's this one? It's a grade four. Oh, God. How? We think it has to do with the way the baby responds to the respirator. Respirator again. What appears to be happening is that the baby is trying to breathe on its own while the respirator is trying to breathe for it. Breathing out of synchrony may bring on the bleed. What can you do? Well, we insert a thin tube called a shunt into the side of the head, through the brain, and into the ventricle. Now, the other end of the shunt is passed beneath the skin and to the abdominal cavity, allowing the excess fluids to drain. For how long? 
Well, generally, the shunt is lengthened every two years to keep up with the growth of the child. Surgery every two years? For life? Well, some small number do outgrow it, but most do remain shunt dependent. What if you don't do it? That's not a consideration. She couldn't survive. Well, can she survive with it? Has there been damage? Will this mean there's going to be more? Why don't we talk about that when we see where we are? Right now, it's just not a relevant question. For whom? This is not your baby. This is our baby. I want to know where this is going. I'm sure Dr. Radburn would be glad to discuss it with you. I want to talk to Dr. Nelman. Uh, he's been circulated. What does that mean? Assigned to another section. Well, which one? I really don't know. Uh, perhaps the switchboard can help you in the morning. Dr. Phillips, 8265. We're trying to stabilize her tonight. We'll take her into surgery sometime tomorrow. Okay? Well, how? How can you? Surgery? Anesthesia? How can she survive that? We won't be using anesthesia. What did you say? Well, beyond a local, there's just too much danger. What about the pain? Their memory isn't formed yet. They have no memory of pain. No memory of pain? I want to talk to Dr. Radburn. He'll be on rounds most of the morning. Before any surgery, I want to see him. Dr. Phillips, 8265 staff. Of course. What do you mean you can't reach Dr. Nelman? He's a doctor. Doesn't he have a, a beeper or something? Look, we have a child in your hospital. She's been his patient. This is important. Well, who is on call? Doctor who? We don't even know him. I know. I know what to At do. At noon? All right. Neil, I... Oh, all right, I see. No, no. No message. Thank you. No. What? Kenderly. Let's go back to Kenderly. Intraventricular hemorrhage. What grade did they tell you? Four. Grade four IVH. And the collapsed lung. Yes. How can I help? You try to communicate with these people, but they don't listen. All you get is contradictions. You ask for a prognosis. They don't even acknowledge the question. You want to know whether or not to let her go? No. I know how much you wanted this baby, how much you planned on it, how much you want it still. Fifteen years ago, we delivered a two, two and a half pound preemie immature lungs, undeveloped physiology. We played God. No. We let God play God. Kept the baby warm, gave it nutrition, hydration, everything short of assisted ventilation. We let nature decide whether or not it was supposed to live. Usually, mercifully, it didn't. There was grief. It ended. The parents often went on to have another baby. They'd been spared the agony of a long, slow, horribly torturous death. Or being with the lifelong sadness of a deformed or badly damaged child. And it is sorrow. I don't care what you're told or what you've heard. It is, in my opinion, a deep, embittering, stressful sadness. Ultimately, modern technical medicine changed all that. It became God. And it decided if there was a heartbeat, an impulse of cranial activity, then the child was to be preserved no matter the consequences to the parents or the children. And in many cases, with the two and three pounders, their work is genius. They do save babies that would not have lived before. But below that, at the weight of your child, below two pounds, they don't answer your questions because they don't know the answers. So one has to ask, is it medicine or is it experimentation? There's a time to let some of these children die.
She's had an IVH, and we're worrying. We're worrying about her lungs. But we don't think we can wait. We're doing the shunt this afternoon. Are there any gains? Just one sign that she might improve. A, a, a response to touch. A, a voice. Anything. Just one thing to justify this torture she's going through. She can die. Or survive with brain damage or other handicaps. There are no lab tests or printouts that read beyond all shadow of a doubt. We don't want you to. I'm sorry? No more heroic measures. These are not heroic measures, they're standard procedures. I know how hard you've worked. We appreciate it. We both do, sincerely. But we don't want any surgery. The admission papers you signed already contain a consent form. No, we rescind it. It is very obvious to me that we have to do everything in our power and not let anyone stand in the way of doing the best we can for this child, even if it means getting a court order. Where are we in all of this? I mean, who are the parents, anyway? You must be going through hell. Can you stop them? That's the question. No, I'm afraid it isn't. I can't imagine anything more painful or devastating than what you're suffering. Or being made to suffer. But right now, you're in a private hell. Do you want a public one? How? Are you prepared to argue publicly that you want your child to die? Because that's what you're going to have to do. Why does it have to be public? I can handle that side. Oh, no, no, no. You're not the one they're going to go after. You've seen what the media does with cases like this. You're going to be fair game, Mrs. Scott. And my opponent's going to come into that courtroom and take every advantage of it. He'll say, it's unnatural not to want your baby. It, it, it goes against everything we know about the instinct of mothering. And he'll, he'll ask you, are you telling this court you want these doctors to kill your baby, Mrs. Scott? What kind of woman would want such a thing? That's what you're going to hear if you go to litigation. You're going to be on the front page of the paper and every night on the 6 o'clock news. You're going to have microphones thrust in your face every time you open your front door. Can you handle that? Neil. Oh, hold on just a minute. We're not going to do this. I said just a minute. You're hardly able to deal with this between yourselves. How are you going to deal with family and friends? Finish what? What you started up there. I started? What the hell did I start? Going to court. I hate it. We can talk, can't we? We can explore our options and express an opinion. Does that include me? Let me tell you something. I don't care if this does make the front page. It's the only way that we're going to... This? What is this? This is our child! I didn't put it that way. It doesn't mean anything to you. Those things he said up there. You can't just give up! I'm not giving up! He said we couldn't do it! He never said that! He said it would be difficult! Lawyer? You're going to hire a lawyer? I want to stop them. I want to make them let her go. Our baby's dying, Dave. Well, well, when did they tell you this? Oh, well, they didn't. They don't tell you anything. They just keep on going. I mean, her lungs are dying, her brain is dying, and they just go on. Listen, listen. You've both been wound tight as hell over this. I think you ought to take off for a couple oh, no, of I weeks. Can't. We can't do that. My God, Wendy's still pumping her milk and taking it to them, they freeze it. They got a whole freezer full of milk that the baby's never going to use. And you want to hire a lawyer? 
Your wife's giving milk and you want to pull the plug on your own kid? My God, Neil, how, how the hell could I do that to one of mine? She's not like one of yours. She's alive. <laughs> what kind of life? You can't make that judgment. You're not God. Oh, don't get me started on God. You just can't kill a, a kid just, just because you didn't get what you wanted. She's entitled to a life, whatever it is. Hell, Neil. You know, sometimes it's a crazy world. You, you get a little dirt on the window, you can't see the full picture. It's the doctors who can't see the full picture. They only know what happens in their world, in their laboratory. It's our child. And they think that we have nothing to say about what happens to her. I never felt so out of control in my whole life. I've got to fight them, David. Well, great. Why don't you do it? You just make sure that it ruins your half of the business when it makes it news and not mine. Business? What are you talking about? Is that all you care about? The only reason why you give a damn is the business? Uh, Neil, oh, Neil, listen to me. I never... And you can go to hell! We're not taking the same train on this one! going home. Yes. Must be wonderful. Sometimes. It can be, yes, if I were her. Oh, Mrs. Scott, I'm sorry. You'll need an orange gown. Why orange? They've operated on her. This way, Mrs. Scott. Dr. Kaiser, call the page operator. Dr. Kaiser, call the page operator. She's fighting. not fighting. You're fighting. The machines are fighting. Things growing pretty strained. Home? Yes. Friends? Terry, she promised to come and see the baby. She didn't. No. She's not pulling away from you. She doesn't know what to say, how to deal with it. She's scared. This frightens her. I'm not worrying about it. Who's worrying about you? This is very difficult to get through alone. There are some people that I'd like you to meet. What people? Parents, like yourself, they get together once in a while. And do what? Talk. Yeah, I know. It's like a sack full of garbage. You open it up, it all falls out. They're getting together this Friday afternoon. I could give you the address. No, thanks. I'm late. I have to go. Friday afternoon. Who's Blyer turning up with his trucks? Thursday. Let's call him. Don't worry. I'm not worrying about it. Let's just take care of it, all right? Shipping, this is Neil. Mr. Scott, this is Mr. Tabner from County Hospital. We'd like you to come in as soon as it's convenient. It's a matter of your account. What do you mean insurance? My wife has insurance. We both have insurance. Your wife has insurance. She doesn't have coverage. Yes, she does. It's a pamphlet right here. 
Here's the benefit schedule. Uh, Taverner. Eternity, 16. Yeah, uh, let me call you back in a minute. Look, all covered expenses incurred as a result of pregnancy and resulting childbirth, including complications arising therefrom. There it is. Your wife works at um, Trans Universal Airlines. Yeah, in sales. She's a sales representative. She was a stewardess at Palm West for seven years, and she went to Trans Universal. Five and a half months ago. Five. Yeah, five. At which time she was already pregnant. Yes, I guess so. There's an exclusionary clause in her policy, Mr. Scott. There is no coverage for any medical indisposition at the time of employment. But the maternity bill at City Hospital, they paid for that. Your policy paid for Mrs. Scott's maternity. But I have the same clause in mine. With comprehensive medical benefits not to exceed $20,000. So what's the problem? This is the problem. $71,000. Your child has required a number of procedures. It's been less than two weeks. It's 71,000. She wouldn't be alive today if it weren't for the extraordinary facilities available here. But how am I going to pay this? I, I don't have that kind of money. The bill has to be satisfied, Mr. Scott, one way or another. Stuff is good for is firewood. Should have done this months ago. What's happened? They've done the surgery. When? I don't know. Yesterday, last night. me into any more feelings. They just aren't there. Damn them for this. You know? Damn all of us. No, never. Never is a deep pit. What do you mean? What does that mean? I was called down to the hospital business office today. It turns out our insurance has run out. They want $71,000 from us. And it's climbing. I wish she'd been born dead. Not now, Neil. God, please don't fall apart on me now. I need you. <coughs> what for? I can't even help my own child. Our child! She's not our child. She's theirs. Stop it! You tell them to stop it. You never tell them a goddamn thing. You sit there crying. I can't help my crying. I hate your crying. It makes me feel like I'm supposed to do something. I feel like I'm failing you. I have failed. I love you, Neil. I love our baby. I need you to love us both. She's, you know, she's still on home hyperalimentation, IV solutions at night. 
And we're fighting organ damage, which is rough. <laughs> How are you managing with the tray? Well, compared to other things we've seen, we'll take that any time. <laughs> no problem. I always say, on my bad days, I always say, I know what Janet would say. No, no problem. problem. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Excuse me, yeah. No problem. <laughs> so, how's your baby? Uh, he's doing very well cognitively. He's just very impaired motor-wise. We're working on it, but it is driving us crazy. <laughs> 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 you want to know what that's like? No. Okay. Cheese? Hi. You want some more wine? Uh, sure. Just don't look at the label. <laughs> that bothers you, doesn't it? How can they laugh like that? They couldn't with anybody else. Well, their babies are alive, and yours is dying. You're afraid she'll die. And you're afraid she won't. Afraid to want her to die, and yet you think that's what's best. And you think back over those thoughts, and you think those are not the feelings of a mother. How can I be having those feelings? What kind of person am I? Thinking about letting your own child die. We have all gone through those feelings. I'd rather not talk about this. But that's what you're thinking, isn't it? I don't know the right thing to do. I don't even know the right thing to want to do. It's easy to back away and leave it up to the doctors. And you're clean. You're off the hook morally. But your child is still suffering. But how can you go to the doctors and tell them what to do? Who better? Who else is going to go the whole route? But you just can't do that. Can you? I have a little boy. He's eight years old. He was a 32-week preemie. He had a grade three IVH when he was on 70% oxygen. And they put in a shunt. He had heart stoppage. They put a wire into his heart. And uh, I felt that the torture and the invasion that was going on with my baby had to stop. Only I didn't feel entitled to say that. I had very bad feelings about myself when I even thought that. Today, he's certifiably blind. He has the mental development of a two-year-old. When I first took him into the hospital to have the shot replaced at two years old, the nurses all said, oh, isn't he cute? And today, when I take him in, when he starts to go crazy, because I know that he, he knows where he's going, they don't think he's so cute anymore. They think he's a pain in the ass. What happens to him when he's 20? Or when he's 40, if I'm not here? <sighs> My husband and I haven't slept together since we brought our son home. My husband sleeps in another room with him every night because he wakes up with seizures. You know, did they think of that when they saved his life? Or did they do it just because they could? I've lived with what you're going through. And they talked me out of trying to stop it. Actually, they didn't. They didn't need to talk me out of it. My guilt talked me out of it. And I've been paying with guilt ever since. I was hoping you'd still be here. What chance does my baby have? Statistically, with a grade four IVH, chances are very high that she will end up with multiple devastations. Multiple. 
mental retardation, hydrocephalus, seizures, cerebral palsy, blindness. What about her lungs? That complicates things further. Not much chance for anything. No. I want her taken off the respirator. I want it all stopped. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to make them do it. Neither do I. <sighs> but I'm going to help you try. Would you? I think you're right. I think they've done as much as they can. What can I do? <sighs> you could ask for a meeting of the Ethics Committee. Ethics, uh, uh, what's that? Uh, it's an infant care review hearing. It's called if the parents and doctors can agree on therapy or care. As a member, I can call it for you. When? Two or three days. What happens? Dr. Radburn will argue his position. I will present yours. No, I'll present mine. Every hospital has its own rules and procedures. At this hospital, parents, they don't attend. Because it's thought that the committee members would not be able to speak openly, truthfully. They don't even want to know the parents. They think it's better if they don't. I can't be there? I agree with you. I, I don't think it's proper. You could try. You could ask. Who? The standing chairman is Dr. Radburn. The emergency trach will keep him going. I'll get a neurologist down here, Stat. I want you to stand by. Keep the air passage clear. Dr. Radburn? Mrs. Scott. You want to come to the hearing? Yes. Be here Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock. I'll have somebody take you down. Pretty late. Aren't you cold? A little. Well, come on to bed. In a minute. I need you there tomorrow. I can't. We have a big shipment going out. It's got to get done. Dave can't do it alone. Please. What's the point? I'm not going to listen to a word you have to say. Behind those doors, you do the best you can with what you've got. It is not our job to keep long-term custodial facilities full. 
It's our job to prevent it. I did not get into this business to play God, to decide who's going to get treatment and who's not. Our job is to do the best we can to achieve the best outcome. Now, in some situations, that may mean a vegetative outcome, but that is still our job. And I am never going to be in a position of taking the baby's only chance unless the outcome is so dismal that there is none, no hope. It is my feeling that parents have a right and an obligation to support that effort as much as I do. And I think most of society agrees with me that parents do not have the right to withhold therapy, appropriate, logical, sensible therapy that sensible men might agree upon any more than I do. You don't go into a pregnancy unless you want your baby. This is a time when you ought to be in there covering us with your support, stumbling all over yourselves to work with us. With some parents, however, even those tenuous links that you hope to establish haven't tied in. They're reacting to anxiety and stress in a way that is not the same for everybody else. I can respect that. But when we are in there with your baby fighting to preserve its life, I have no concern with that kind of thinking. None. Zero. We have proceeded 29 days into therapy with this baby. We have gathered the opinion of specialists, neurologists, neurosurgeons, neonatal intensive care specialists. We have performed various x-rays and studies and have come to the conclusion that at the moment we are indeed in very serious trouble with this baby. At the moment. There are children attending the schools of this city that have been at that moment themselves. This child is entitled to our continuing every effort to ensure its chance for that life. Mrs. Scott? Mrs. Scott? You don't go into a pregnancy unless you want your baby. Is that what you said? I believe that's what I said. What do you know about us as parents? Have you ever asked one question? Do you know who we are? How much we planned for and wanted a child? How much we look forward to one? You don't know anything about us. You don't want to know. We're just good parents or bad parents. Good if we follow you blindly, bad if we don't. You say there are children in school today who've been where my child is now. How many? One in 20? One in 100? What about the others? You never say. You only show us wonderful, wonderful pictures on the wall. Where are the ones who aren't so wonderful? 
How often are parents told of the damage that can be done if their babies are put on the respirator? Um, brain bleeds, blindness, lungs blown out, irrevocable damage. All because of the respirator. Maybe in three or four months you can hand us a child to take home. But in two years, or six, or ten, where are you when the family's bankrupt and often destroyed? Where will all you wonderful, caring people be then? You use statistics to say what you want us to hear. But you cannot admit that what you're often doing is medical experimentation, not therapy. Because you really don't know what works. I think it's medical torture. And why don't I have a choice whether or not I want my child? She's my child. To go through that. Just tell me something. Do you think my little girl wants to be in that pained, tortured, tiny body? I don't think so. Would you want anybody? you loved to be suffering inside that body. Please, let her go. Ethics committees are not known for their courage. I'm sorry. Shipments got out. What are you guys doing? About what? The holidays. We're fine. Fine. <laughs> Tell me to butt out. Butt out. I better roll. Call. Yeah, sure. Neil? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks. You too. Didn't think you'd be home yet. Just got in. Anything different? At the hospital? Lousy numbers. All around. Christmas present. $207,000. I thought you paid this already. 
I bought that new pair of shoes instead. I don't think you can do that. Let's get out of here. And go where? On a date. A what? A date. I've forgotten how. Let's fake it. What are you doing? Hinting for handouts. How'd you get my number? Not in the book. All right. I just didn't want you to think that I was always such a bargain, that's all. Life is short. If you're spending it like there's no tomorrow, you may as well spend it on me. Hello? Yes? Thank you. They want us to know the hospital right away. is just giving out. We did everything we could. I'm sorry. This is not what we were working toward, but we could just never catch up. Have you taken her off the ventilator? We'll need your consent. Our consent? I have some forms for you to sign. They're in my office. Is she in any pain? No. No pain. She'll breathe on her own, but only for a few hours. I want to take her home. I want to take her home. <laughs> 